James Damore learned the hard way what happens when you question the groupthink of Silicon Valley. While working at Google, the world's most powerful company, Damore privately circulated a paper questioning his employer's diversity policies. He didn't attack anyone, he just questioned the internal logic of what he was being told. For that, the company vilified him and his character and then fired him. Now, Demore and another ex-Google employee, David Gudeman, are suing that company. They're accusing Google of systemic bias against white employees, men, and conservatives. Their 161-page lawsuit exposes a remarkable and terrifying climate at Google, a place where biased, hateful, and even violent political rhetoric is totally acceptable, just as long as it's directed against the right targets. The suit contains documents that shows Googlers openly maintained, for example, politically motivated employee blacklists. Here's one. In 2015, Google manager Paul Cowan wrote the following on Google's internal networks for all employees to see. If you express a dunderheaded opinion about religion, about politics, or about social justice, it turns out I'm allowed to think you're a halfwit. I'm perfectly within my rights to mentally categorize you in my D-head box. Yes, I maintain mentally, but not yet publicly, a blacklist. If I had to work with people on this list, I would refuse and try to get them removed. Well, the blacklists were real and not just internal. They also applied to conservative figures from outside the company. Blogger Curtis Yarvin, known online as Mencius Moldbug, once visited Google to have lunch with an employee. According to the suit, Yarvin's arrival triggered a silent alarm at Google. Security arrived to escort him off campus. His mere presence was considered unacceptable. According to the lawsuit, Google employees were awarded with bonuses by the company for publicly denouncing Demore's memo. In April of 2017, Google manager Chris Bissell advised employees if they spoke at conferences, they should do so only while demanding that white males from other companies be kicked off panels in favor of women or non-white employees. Quote, you'll feel pretty damn smug about doing it, Bissell said. Google HR said Bissell's attacks on the basis of race and gender somehow broke no company rules. And that's just scratching the surface of what Demore has brought to light. The suit has more than 100 examples of employees and managers saying conservatives or Trump supporters ought to be fired, defending political violence, implementing quota systems to discriminate against white people and men to the benefit of other favored groups. It's intense, it's appalling, but don't kid yourself, it's not just happening at Google. Last night, Dennis Finley, who was an editor at the Burlington Free Press, was fired by the media giant Gannett because he dared to question, just question, a proposal that would add a third gender option to driver's licenses in Vermont. Now, if you're conservative, it might be difficult to get your head around what is happening in this country. So much has changed. But here's the bottom line. The federal government is no longer the main threat to your privacy and to your freedoms. You've grown up thinking that it's no longer true. Big corporations are the main threat to your freedom and your privacy. The government doesn't own your private emails. Google does. Federal employees can't be fired for their political views. Private sector employees are all the time. The Trump administration can't end your ability to publicly communicate your ideas. Twitter and Facebook can do that, and they do do it all the time. The Orwellian future is increasingly the Orwellian present, and tech barons are becoming our new commissars. Liberals who once admirably stood up for free expression and in opposition to concentrations of corporate power have been thoroughly co-opted. They're getting rich from it. James Damore has seen it all from the inside firsthand. He joins us now with his lawyer, Harmeet Dillon. Welcome to you both. Happy to Thanks. be here. So James, in, in here. reading uh, these documents, what's so striking is not just that you got fired for expressing your views, and I want to restate having read the piece that got you fired, you weren't attacking anybody. But you're raising questions. You got fired for that. But Google seemed to feel the need to vilify you after you got fired, to discredit you, to attack your character, and to encourage others to do the same. That seems Stalinist. Why did they feel the need to do that, do you think? Because I attacked their orthodoxy, and they really need to send a message to other employees that, no, you can't do this. You can't question our policies. Yeah, well, they, they certainly did, paying bonuses to people who denounced you, like a camera re-education re uh, session. So, Harmeet, in this complaint, you have example after example of Google targeting people on the basis of their race and their sex. My impression was that was illegal. Is it? 
It is illegal. It's illegal under federal law. It's illegal under California law. And what a lot of lawyers even around the country don't understand that under California law, we have a unique labor code provision that makes it illegal to discriminate against somebody on the basis of their political activities or their political views. So that is uh, among the claims in our lawsuit. And that can actually affect a lot, and it has affected women at Google. So to be clear, our lawsuit actually includes women as well if they've been discriminated against on the basis of any of these protected characteristics. But I mean, Google is, you know, is the most powerful company in the world, the most famous company in the world, and they're doing this openly. I mean, on internal servers, they don't seem to have worried they're going to get in trouble for violating a pretty basic law. Why? Well, so they're a $700 billion plus company. They are ubiquitous. They have virtual monopoly power over search engines. And they've been getting away with it for a long time. Now, you know, probably you and I and some other conservatives have been alarmed about what we've read about Google uh, being able to scan Gmail and keep all of your data. That's what's really troubling about this. They, at one time, know everything about you. And at the other hand, they're using that information against you. We've seen them do this in their commercial practices as well, the demonetization of viewpoints they don't believe in on YouTube and other places. And I'm hearing from people inside the company and people who've left the company that their artificial intelligence programs for search engines similarly are applying political biases and filters. And you and I wouldn't even know it. And eventually, we're going to find that they're controlling what people think they are. Obviously, inside the company, they're getting away with punishing people and controlling what people think and um, you know people don't understand that on Silicon Valley they have these campuses and you come to the campus in the morning they take care of your dry cleaning all of your meals entertainment everything and so people are in this little bubble it's like the brave new world right. of Silicon Valley it's, and that's fine shocking. but the fact that they're controlling our political dialogue and the way people experience reality and Congress just sits there passively is if they have no authority is is contemptible so James um, I would encourage, by the way, our viewers to go online and read what you wrote because it's hardly radical, it's sensible and smart. Do you think that being at odds with Google is going to affect your future employment prospects? Yes, definitely. And many employees have made it clear that they're spreading the message about not only me, but anyone that they've uh, discovered that has certain viewpoints to blackball them out of careers within Silicon Valley. So why is that not terrifying? Oh, I think it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so what, for every James Damore who got fired, uh, Tucker, yes. there are many people inside the company who we represent who are afraid to even raise their hand and say this is happening to me because the threat is not just of a blacklist within Google, but of a blacklist within the entire tech community throughout the United States. That's, the, See, that's how scary this is. If you're a conservative and you grew up thinking that the federal bureaucracy was the greatest threat to you, it takes a while to realize, no, it's not actually. It's Google, and they have more power. And I just got to speed yes. to you both, and we really wish you well and be following this case. Thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. Thank you. But the bottom line is that Google violated both the National Labor Relations Act, in our opinion, and also numerous provisions of California and federal law related to discrimination and the way they treated James and the way they treated, as it turns out, numerous other Google employees. After I began to represent James, um, I invited other people who have suffered discrimination at Google to contact me. And we literally heard from dozens of other Google employees, current and former, people who had been hounded out of their jobs because they were conservatives, people who had been refused promotions because they were men, people who had been refused promotions or had been refused transfers because they were white, and people who had been bullied and denigrated, maybe still working at Google. Um, some of the people who have talked about uh, this case with us and whose anecdotes are included in the complaint are people who still work at Google, people who have been disciplined at Google for their views, People who've been uh, punished, harassed, shamed at Google for challenging Google's illegal workplace activities. And so um, we took our time, we did a lot of research, we heard from a lot of people, and we've uh, been drafting this lawsuit for some time, and we finally uh, filed it this morning. And this is the first step in a long series of things that's going to occur. Google's going to get a chance to respond to this lawsuit, and I'm sure they already have their uh, media machinery ginned up and have, a, have the story du jour of why it's legal to fire somebody for their protected workplace activities. Um, it is what it is, and you know, judge will ultimately decide some of these issues. But what's important here is that James and the other named plaintiff are standing up not for themselves as individuals, but for the concept 
that each individual in America is entitled to the protection of the labor laws. The labor laws are not just there to protect certain categories of people because they happen to be politically favorable at any given point in time. And just because Google is a $700 billion corporation that defends some of its workplace activities as startup type atmosphere, uh, it does not excuse it from, uh, from honoring all the laws in this country. Um, Google, as you read the complaint, you'll see, and I think uh, Matt in my office has provided a copy of the complaint to people here. Um, Google has engaged in some shocking activities, in my opinion. I was truly shocked myself when I saw some of the quotations that we've seen from inside the company. Google managers encourage people to harass other people into submission with the political orthodoxy. It's considered verboten at Google to challenge the concept that gender parity and uh, race parity is uh, achievable through quotas and that's okay. Um, it is acceptable at Google to threaten violence against conservatives, uh, memes about punching Nazis and equating Nazis to Trump supporters and Trump voters are common and are tolerated at Google and are published on Google's webs, web, internal websites. Um, employees who complain about these practices are brushed off almost to a man and a woman. If they complain about uh, being harassed or bullied at Google, Google HR sends them back an email saying, we've looked at that and that's not a violation of our workplace policies. So there's kind of a Lord of the Flies mentality there where um, a person can be singled out and then group shamed and bullied and fired and that's what happened to James as if they're not a human being. And that's unacceptable in 2017. And so um, we suspect and believe that as a result of Google's workplace activities, numerous people who fall into these three categories have actually never even made it through the door at Google. As you can see from excerpts in this complaint, Google managers and Google individuals who work in the hiring uh, area and interviewing people make it a point to try to suss out people's political views and their sensitivity to diversity issues as a condition of their employment. And so we hope that as a result of filing this lawsuit, we're going to hear from people who interviewed at Google and who are not offered jobs, even though they were the most qualified person for the job, solely because of these protected characteristics. So we encourage people to contact us and let us know of their experiences in that regard.